disciples. You got to wait and be of good courage. Hallelujah. Woo. My God, my God. We doing something here. We doing something here. All right. We must wait with patience that we know God will do his or his will in our, on his time. And that is all we need to know. So we must wait on the revival that was sent from God for us. Acts chapter 3, we see the story about the lame man. And he waited to be healed. He waited to be healed. He, they said they laid him at, the, at that place all the time. Daily when the church would open. So he had to wait all them years for that moment. And I guarantee you, that church he was waiting at had so many revivals. You know that's right. But he didn't get healed until that specific time. Amen. I know they had many, how good is it, 38 years or something like that? He laid there, and that church had to have something. They wasn't open doing nothing. But it wasn't his time. So at, it's not going to be at the revival you think it is. It may be at the revival you least believe you're going to get blessed at. Is where you get blessed at. Keep coming. Keep having them. I couldn't believe that. I'm like the lame man had to wait at that table to be healed. He had to see Peter and John to receive his healing. The, and like I said, the church had many revivals. But Peter and John got there. But the man was still begging after all them years. But when God comes, when God comes, it's efficient. It's efficient done. You see, if you listen to the story, what did he say? Silver and gold have I not, but what in the name of Jesus? Arise and walk. So it was when Jesus came into the ministry. When Jesus came into the church. Oh my God, I just found something right here. If they were having service all that time, where was Jesus? Come on now. He came and said, in Jesus, in the name of Jesus arise and walk. Then something must have been wrong if he did 38 years and know Jesus arise and walk. <laughs> something wrong with that church. If you have to sit out there, I'm going to leave that alone. I believe that. But think about it. Where is the power? And they wasn't. He, they said he was begging for arms, so they had to have money. But you can't buy a revival. You can't buy healing. What he told that 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 sorcerer. Your money perish with you. You think you can buy the Holy Ghost? That's right, that's right. You can't buy this. Right, no. <laughs> you got to come through the gate the right way. Right. You can't go any other way. Mm -hmm. I'm a, hallelujah. My, my, my. I feel it in my hands. <laughs> Some people have no choice but to wait. We see in the book of Matthews, John the Baptist waited for Jesus to come and be baptized. He waited. He could not decrease until Jesus came. Amen. No matter how angry or mad he was or tired, he had to wait till his cousin show up and do his fulfilling baptism. So if he have to wait, what make you think you ain't going to have to wait? He had to wait on Jesus. We got to wait with Jesus. And nobody want to wait. Everybody want a fast, quick fix. That don't last. But not everybody. Most people. I know I was one. But God had to slow me down. And now I'm still being taught patience. That's a hard area for me. I always went out and get what I wanted, whatever I needed. But now that I'm in the Lord, I got to wait. And it don't feel good to wait. It ain't comfortable to wait. I want to do things my way. <laughs> and he said, no. You got to wait on me to be 
build up what I have to build up in you. So just because he gives you a vision does not mean it's a material life right now. You stay planted under your pastor, under your leader, and wait. That's right. For the appointed time. Don't think just because you got a little bit of knowledge, you can just run and do what you want. It ain't gonna work. You gonna fall and go back there. Ask the prodigal son. Had to return. He probably had to return again if he would have not heard the word of God. Don't move to rest. Because you can. Hallelujah. My God, where am I here, Lord? I've been through so much that God has given me so much for it. I hope you caught that. You want much, but you don't want to go too much to get. I know. Now, I now know I do not mind waiting on my deliverance. I do not mind waiting on my power. I do not mind waiting on my gifts of the Spirit. Amen. And this is what troubles people. They're like, well, when am I going to be able to preach? When am I going to be able to shout? When am I going to be able to speak in tongues? When am I going to be able to do this? Wait! Mm. Nobody want to wait. Mm. You got to wait. I didn't want to wait, but I had to wait. And when I got it, I'm like, oh, Lord. Could I wait a little longer? Because all hell break out when you get certain gifts. Because you gotta keep them. Especially this army. And the devil wanna keep taking them or make you unworthy of them. So you in a battlefield. Cause you wouldn't wait. Like I used to say, I always wanted to grow up and be a grown up. Now I wish I was a child again. I can't wait till I'm grown. I can't wait till I should have waited. Because I didn't have all these bills then. Somebody took care of me then. Same thing with church. I should have waited a little while longer. But now that the ministry started, I can't go back. That's why I guarantee you wait before you move. Because once you get out there, you can't close the doors now. Too late. You got to learn as you go there. Oh, my God. I hope somebody caught that. That's what's up. They want to bounce around. And then they can run and do their own thing. Wait on your leader. No matter how long they say, sit under them, sit under them. I was under my apostle for 15 years. 15 long years. Yes, I wanted to do my own thing. Yes, I wanted to leave. Yes, I think it's... They're trying to keep me forever. Hmm. But now I want to go back. Move too fast. But I can't go back. God said, I'm going to take care of you. That's in my next message. Sufficient. He said, my grace is sufficient. So once you do it, step out on the river, you're going to be all right, Peter. God, as long as you keep your eye on Jesus. That's all right. That's all right. We almost done. We almost done. Where we at here? All right. We don't mind waiting on our gifts or the spirit because I know I do not get. This is important. I do not get all the gifts at one time. And no way tell me got all the gifts at once. You must wait on each one. Yes. You gotta wait on word and knowledge. Mm-hmm. You gotta wait on discerning the spirits. You got to wait on faith. You got to wait because you got to know how to use them when you got. Nobody come on Christmas to give you all the gifts at once. You got to wait the next Christmas to get some more gifts. You got to wait on these gifts. And that's part of revival. Revival is being able to know how to wait on the right one to come. And not give up because the white revival isn't there yet. The one that's customly made to deliver you from whatever you need to be delivered from. Not saying that the revivals are ineffective. It's just that they're not ready for you. They're for someone at that moment. But it was not ordained for you yet. The key word, yet. 
ask yourself that. How long can you wait for what you need? And the next thing is, what did you do while you're waiting? First Timothy chapter 4, 13 and 14 tells you what to do while you're waiting. And then we must pray and keep on fasting. I love this one. Y'all better get this one. Genesis 29, 15 to 30. Talks about Jacob. That's my boy. That's my boy. I couldn't believe it. 14 years? Seven years for one? Got tricked and had to do another seven for the next one? Huh. He got something. 14 years because he loved that woman. How long will you wait for the woman or man you love? 14 years. Not only waiting, but working. Gavin, stop playing. Not only waiting, but working laborly seven years and then get tricked and still say, it's all right. Because I know my God. And he kept working for the other son. Because he loved her. Even though she was barren. He's still waiting. Jesus. How long will you wait for the one you love? How many people can wait on the Lord like Sarah? In need of a child for my husband. Even though you know the story she said and got some handmaids or whatever the case was, but she still had to wait. And Abraham had to wait. She was 90. That's a long wait. Hallelujah. She waited on the Lord. Abraham waited on the Lord. How long can you wait? But you know, oh my God. Do you know what you're waiting for? Do you really know what you're waiting for? Do you keep waiting after the revival? Or do you just give up? What do you do after? The revival is over. And that's something I had to learn when I was dealing with this Shambach character. What did you do when he gone? When the tents are broken down. And no one to talk to. You can't get his number. <laughs> back then. That was back in the 70s. You know. He used to come out here and have tents over here. But, but, but what do you do after the revival? They never taught me that. Hallelujah. We need to ask ourselves. What do we do after the revival? I'm almost done. We're almost done here. But do we not know what we're waiting for? Mm -mm -mm. Listen to this. Hannah waited for her baby to be born. Samuel from Eli. And she waited for him to fulfill his mission in the temple. She gave the child to the church and waited for him to grow up. To do the will of the Lord. She waited. Are you willing to give up something to wait for something to happen with it? Like that seed you need to plant? Can you depart with that seed? Mary departed with her son. You can't depart with two dollars. But you waiting on the Lord. While you're waiting, you need to be sowing sacrificial seeds. The kind of seeds that hurt to give. <laughs> the kind of seeds that say, oh, do I really got it? Uh, mm -hmm. And that's the kind of seed you need to be waiting on. Because those grow. Amen. Amen. I'm almost done, almost done, almost done. Where we at? Where we at? Oh, all right. oh my goodness, another one. Joseph waited yes, while in prison. He waited for the fulfillment of the dreams yes. he had when he said the youngest and the father will rule, he will rule over them and they'll bow down to him. 
So he was in prison, but he still had to wait for the manifestation of the vision or the dream he had. And he waited while he was in jail for a crime he did not commit. You need to wait. You need to wait. You're not in jail. You're not being persecuted. You're not being destroyed. This is for somebody that don't mind waiting on the Lord. We say we don't mind waiting, but we look at all these people in the Bible, what they went through. Could you go through that and still wait? Can you go through that and still wait? Can you go through being tricked seven years and then tricked for another seven and still wait for the woman you love? Or will you just go and find someone else? Because it's an easy way. Who want to wait on something good? How long are you willing to wait? I don't mind waiting. That's why I can sing that song. That's why that song hit a nerve right here. Because I don't mind waiting. It's more better when you wait for something and receive it. Mm -hmm. My God. We almost finished here. Wow. So many times we need to wait on the right word from the Lord to preach. Uh oh. <laughs> Some people don't want to wait on that word and preach. They just know they got a, something to preach, so they're going to preach it. Mm -hmm. But they ain't asked the Lord about it. You need to wait on the word. Dangerous. I'm going way back. Back in the Pentecostal days, you had to wait. Pray, tarry for the word before you preached it. And you had to run it by your pastor before you got up here. That's right. They, they had to examine what you're going to preach before you preach. But we don't want to wait for the Lord to give us a word. We just want to do anything we got in our heart to say. And doing more damage than we, don't, than we should. But if you pray and fast for the right word, that's right in season for this time. It'll work. But you gotta wait on the revelation. Many people, oh, I'm closing, but many people don't want to wait on the revelation from God about the ministry, the Bible, or the ministry. They get a scripture and they don't, don't, don't have the revelation because they never waited on it. They never asked God, what does it really mean? They just think they know it, but never asked and asked for the real meaning of what should be said. Why? Because it takes too long to get an answer. How long are you willing to wait for the right, correct word to bring forth? Hmm. Where that come from? I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, Lord have mercy. No, thank you. Let your will be done. This is the word. This is the word. It might not be as nice as some other words, but this is the best word we can have. Because this word is the key to eternal life. And this is what's going to get you in the kingdom. This is what's going to help you when you go outside. This, if you get this be a part of your heart and a part of your life, you will be successful in ministry. Because you know what to wait for and you don't mind waiting for it. This is important. I could have went on with some other good stuff. But he said, let's give you some great stuff. Good is fine, but great is better. That's right. All right, somebody. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. Well, you want some great provision from the Lord? I don't want just any kind of thing. I want some good stuff, some great stuff. Anybody can do anything, but only the Holy Ghost can do the right thing. And this is why people came to Jesus, because he had something right to give them. He was unique. He was not like other people. He was totally different. Not like the Joneses. All right. I'm almost done. Here we go. I'm closing. Where we at? Oh, my God. My God. My God. Woo! Because, all, because not all words are for now. So we need to wait on the appointed time to share our knowledge. We need to wait on the Lord for our unknown tongues. We need to wait on the Lord for our demons. And our Holy Ghost power. Listen to me. In the book of Acts, they were in the upper room. And they waited. 